fiction, science fiction, horror, fantasy, crime, LGBT, thriller. You have now entered the house of mystery with your hosts, Eric Shapiro, David North Martino. John Copenhaver and Al Warren. Heard on KCB 106.5 FM Los Angeles. 102.3 FM Riverside. And 105.0 AM Palm Springs. Uh, Kelly, thank you for being here with us, first of all. Thanks for having me on. Well, Kelly, welcome. Yeah, yeah, we're we're really glad you're here, and and please be comfortable. We're not this isn't a big attack thing. So, um, now now let's 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 just first of all, you were married to Alex Jones for uh, how many years? I was with Alex for fifteen years, and I was married to him for twelve years. Wow, wow! So you, that's a substantial relationship. Um, yes. How many children do you have? Between, with the two of you? Uh, we have three kids. Okay. So that's sort of set. Now, if, if I can, it, now you applied for a divorce originally about a year ago, was it, or two? No, the, the big news stories that came out in April of last year about the jury trial that happened, yeah. that was actually, a, it was a suit filed by my ex-husband. Um, after divorce. So it was a suit affecting parent-child relationship, a custody suit. Um, and so I actually filed for divorce way back in 2013, and I've been in something like, I don't know, four years of litigation coming up here, or I guess almost five mm. now, yeah, wow. four and a half, including Aren't... the divorce. How old are your children right now? So what I what I, I know people are interested in the kids, and what I really try to do is to keep them out of this as much as possible. Um, but we have you know kids in all different levels of school, from elementary to high school. So it, it you know it's it's a very um, yeah that's an age where people can really pick up a lot of things, isn't it? It's, it's it it probably can't be easy. Um, now. What has been your biggest concern, if we start at the top, um, with what's going on between you and your ex-husband now? So, first of all, this lady just wants to air dirty laundry and this is personal business and, you know, what is she even talking to these guys about? But really, I first to come forward because, and I'm very happy to do so, by the way, on your true crime show, what's going on and what's happened in the past with my case it's really a very complicated and disturbing true crime story. It's a case of serious corruption in the county I live in, which is Travis County, Texas, with multiple bad actors and um, I would dare to say even conspiracy or collusion between bad actors that has resulted in me, that, that you know, first resulted in me losing custody of my kids for years off of lies and perjury that they've admitted and then ultimately my kids are still in this situation because um, the law... When you say that you feel that Alex has presented your children to danger, what are those dangers that you speak of? Well, they're dangers that came out in court that include severe abuse, med medical neglect, um, exposure to adult content, um, quasi-abandonment. So there are real concrete issues that came up and were put before the court. Wow. Now, you said a mouthful there, physical abuse, um, you know, exposure I to said abuse. I didn't, I, yeah, I didn't say physical abuse, although um, there was some unreported abuse. However, that was not, uh, I'm not contending that or, or alleging that that had happened at Alex's hands. Um, I, what I said was abuse, and most of the abuse in this case is in the ephemera, of being severe emotional or psychological abuse. But that abuse was shown, and that's the abuse that I tried my case off of, um, mm -hmm. and it's evident. Um, you know, there's recordings and all kinds of matter of materials that show this to be true. 
So, and I certainly wouldn't say it if it weren't, because he's the most litigious guy on the planet. Um, but, yes, uh, serious abuse and serious medical neglect. Like, uh, you know, another problem I have when I tell my story is I can't really disclose my children's medical history and things of that nature. So, um, but I will say that it was, in some cases to me, it was life endangering and or possibly endangering. And, um, of course, additional to that was the exposure to things no one would want their kids exposed to. Um, substance abuse issues, I didn't bring that up, but it certainly came out heavily in court. And um, quasi-abandonment, you know, uh, during the divorce or periods, months of time that Alex was away from the kids. And, um, and yet still, they couldn't be with their own mom, which is kind of hard to believe. So. Well- well, well let's, let's start with this then. Um, if, if you feel safe talking about this, well, let's talk about the, the medical neglect. I mean, seeing as how Alex's, you know, media empire is based on the sale of supplements and, and health supplies. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, I can talk about what came out in open court, I'm pretty sure. Um, and, and it was, I would say, like, not the most serious issue, Um that my children have had to deal with, but my very young child had a broken toe. I mean, I know it's not the end of the world, but this child was really in a lot of pain and went for months without it even being treated or looked at, and everybody was like, oh, it's no big deal. Well, I took her, and, you know, she did have a broken toe. And um, and uh, the and this all came out in court again, so the other things I'm not going to talk about because I am concerned about exposing my children more and um, actually, I, I would really, I'm really scared to talk about it, guys. Can we not talk about it? Because I'm afraid he's going to sue me. I mean, you know, if I can tell you something off the record, I will to show you that I'm being truthful. But I have to be really careful because well, uh, I don't want to get in. We understand that. And, and uh, actually, we'll, we'll, we will simply concentrate on what is on the record because we here at the House of Mystery, we don't want to feel like we're hiding anything. So whatever you feel safe talking about, we will go in that direction. How about this? This is a little bit safer question. Um, you're asking, you know, you, you're, you talk about your underage children being on the show or being exposed to media. Um L- I mean, I'll tell you that. guys off the air, I can tell you off the record what they've been exposed to and your jaw will drop and you probably won't be a big fan anymore, you know, but, <laughs> and, and you can, why don't you, why don't you broadcast that part of it, you know, like I'll just say, like, look, I can't talk about a lot of the real hardcore, you know, upsetting issues that have, are affecting my children because it um, exposes them to public scrutiny and it's just highly disturbing. I mean, it's things... They're CPS reportable offenses, right? I can say that, like very many of them. And um, CPS reportable concerns. And like I was saying before, I understand that, you know, Kevin is a fan, but I think if he understood what had come out in court, and the court was open um, during the divorce, but I was gagged from talking, so the media wasn't there to cover it. Um, But if people really knew what had come out, I don't think he'd be having very many more fans because it's really horrific. I mean, these are vulnerable little kids, um, you know, grown into older kids, but they're still children um, who have been left in horrific, horrific situation. So. Yeah, but uh, cer- certainly, Kelly, you, you can understand that me knowing something, that that's fine. If Alex loses one fan, n- no big deal. If I quit buying... Uh, brain force or the red pill. You know, that, that, that's one thing. <laughs> you might get a brain. <laughs> yes, yes. But, you know, for, for the listeners, you know, uh, I don't feel good knowing something that they don't know. So we can talk about something that all the listeners can understand. Yeah, later okay. you can tell it. Later that's you can fine. Tell no, you, <laughs> you can tell it. Okay. That. I understand. <laughs> Well, I mean, what the, all the listeners can know that I have given to law enforcement is that um, there was serious aggravated perjury that happened in my case on both the financial side and on the custody side. I had a case that was bifurcated, questionably so, way back, you know, in 2014. And, um, 
lies were said that resulted in me losing. I mean, Alex walked away with the majority of our of our finances and uh, you know our future earnings and things of that nature. Um, you talked about the supplements, and I think one thing that I can say that that I've said before this should be interesting to everybody is that I actually really oppose the supplements. I felt like you know. Alex and I at that point, and I was very already very outspokenly opposed to his um, sort of more hateful and disturbing content. I really distanced myself from the content part of our business, whatever. But I said, no way do I want those supplements. You know, these businesses formed. I, I don't agree with that. And then behind my back, <laughs> my own attorney, and I was the I was a managing member of our company. I was 51% owner, managing member, or whatever it's called. Um, behind my back, my own attorney went and formed the supplement businesses with Alice's parents, who prior to the divorce were living in a one-bedroom pool house and now live in a multimillion-dollar mansion. And they formed these businesses, which then they worked in a lot of our hard assets into. And um, and so when it kind of came time to split it all up, well, it wasn't there to be split up, number one, but again, there was additional perjury involved in any case. I mean, Alex really doesn't have a background in the supplement business. You know, he saw that it could be lucrative and is doing whatever he's chosen to do. Um, I find it highly questionable to sell people supplements off of fear. And obviously there's been reports that have come out about the quality of the supplements. Um, I, I, you know, I don't even get all that, but it's made him no, well, I've heard that myself. profoundly, profoundly yeah. wealthy. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've heard that myself. I mean, he's so yeah. rich, right? But yeah. a lot of, I will yeah. say that I've heard it myself, and I, and I have a lot of, uh, you know, a, a question in those sort of things. But, uh, um, but you know, I'm finding that there's not just him. There's a lot of people doing this. Uh, there's a lot of uh, not GNC. There's GNC a, is an entire company based on that. Well, yeah, but you know, but as a personality selling an item is what I'm talking about. It's like Lucille Ball selling. Well, and fast selling food. it off of fear. Yeah, using like I mean, I think the the Ebola thing was a big deal back in the day when they first formed it. You know, I mean, you do that and you segue into a water filter. You do that and you segue into this or that. I mean, it's a it's a manipulation to. Um, frighten people into using supplements. I mean, I'm all about health and wellness. I certainly could pursue it a little bit more heartily myself. I've been pretty stressed, but I mean, I really admire the people that use um, motivation of, you know, this is for for a healthy purpose or um, build yourself up rather than take this to, you know, be the most manly and to be the best positioned you know, for the supposed impending apocalypse, right? Yeah. Well, absolutely. Yeah. I well, mean, plus, you plus know, it has to if be, you don't... It has to be uh, um, recommended by people. Like, I don't want, I don't want uh, people I like in TV and news and, and uh, movies and music um, selling me something that that's not their specialty, you know? Like, uh, you know... Lady Gaga well, selling me something for my um, prostate. I mean, I don't. I just, I want, I want a specialist that deals with it. Yeah, and so here's, yeah, and here's the big problem I have with the supplements, right? So Alex is always on the air saying, in defense of free speech, and I'm doing this to fund my operation to get the word out, and I need this money for that purpose. Well, Alex um, filed in court against me repeatedly using the money that he got from the supplements. And not only that, you know, to take away my children, and I'm just this mama, you know, I mean, I'm not a perfect mom, I've, I've done things that aren't great, I've done things that are great, you know, but I am a good mom, I'm a, an available, caring, loving mom. So not only has he filed against my motherhood, but he's filed to block my free speech. So actually my coming forward, which I purposely decided to do a couple weeks ago, is an act of civil disobedience, because right now, in the Texas First Court of Appeals, I'm having to defend my free speech actively. And Alex has something like, I think his team of lawyers now is at six or seven, like, multi-million dollar attorneys. I have one attorney, and I am fighting for my free speech, for my right to speak openly on the air about whatever I want. And I think that America should understand that when they're buying supplements from somebody or giving donations on a free speech platform to a company that calls itself Free Speech Systems, 
that person that's at the head of that organization, Alice Jones, whose tagline is the First Amendment at its best, is actively filing against me in court to silence me. And he's not silencing me. He's not fighting to silence me to protect our kids because his behavior is obvious that he's not trying to protect our kids, with, especially with what he did last week, endangering our son, putting him on the air in the most highly charged topic in the country, right? He's fighting to silence me because he knows that what he did to me in family court is a complete illustration of everything corrupt and bad that he is about and his abject and total hypocrisy. And, and you can see that alone in the appeal. I mean, why should I have to? He can say whatever he wants, and it's, he's trying to stop being censored, but I can't, you know, a mom can't get on the air to talk about injustice. I don't think so. It doesn't equate, right? Hmm. Okay, uh, Kelly, you brought up Rex. Let's talk about Rex. Um, you mentioned that he was on the air last week, and he was put there by Alex. Um, now, if I understand right, Rex is 15 years old, correct? Yes, and, I mean, his, his name wasn't really out there before either. I mean, he is protected by court order. Like, his privacy is protected. Mm -hmm. So I hate to even really talk about him, but, yes, he's 15, um, he is, Alex is enjoined by court order from recording him for any purpose other than for a family event. Um, he is required to, uh, consult with me, the primary parent and joint managing conservator on all legal and other such decisions. So he's completely did all of that without my permission. And I can't, like other things, get into why he's particularly endangering correct. But I think Americans can see how irresponsible it is to have a 15-year-old kid get up on the air and make instigative and incendiary comments on one of the most highly charged topics of the country. Well, and my son sure. is brilliant. He he's, is. A, he's a brilliant, yeah, he's a brilliant public speaker. I mean, I can tell you his demeanor is tragically different than it was, and it just seems to be an exact carbon copy of his father's. Um, but it's it's. Um, exploitative, it's irresponsible, and I just think it's, I think it's horrific. I don't think anybody would want their kid up there. I mean, we're talking about David Hogg. He's 18 years old, you know. These kids decided as adults to come forward. My son is a minor child, and, and I am his mother, and I do not agree with what happened at all. Well, they, they, David Hogg is up there simply because, you know, he is serving at the pleasure of our media right now. You know, he's encouraged by our media. But at some point, somebody has got to stand up to David Hogg, and your son has chosen to do it. Um, who's to say that he not he did not choose to do it rather than Alex putting him up to it? Yeah, because if, if my I understand son. understand what you're saying. Well, well, because you're not listening. Well, first of all, well, first of all, I mean, Alex is able to convince. I have people, you know, person after person contacting me on my Twitter account, which is Alex Jones underscore X, and telling me. You know, I lost my husband to Alex Jones. He started listening, and, and, and we divorced. And I know so many people. I mean, Alex is a highly persuasive mass manipulator. My children, uh, I can tell you when, when the verdict came out, my son was very different with me and very, um, I believe, relieved. I believe they felt like they weren't going to be in the middle of this anymore, and they shouldn't have been, but the judge acted unlawfully and did what she did. And so, no, I don't think Rex really chose that. I mean, I really equate Alex to a cult leader. I absolutely will come out and say that. I can tell you that I'm still in the process of becoming deprogrammed from my experience of being with him. I don't see how Alex is radical, white supremacist, um, incendiary, calls to civil war, things of that nature, are really that much less of a concern than any other cult leader. I mean, we had, you know, David Crush or whatever. I equate it to something like that, and I believe that what I showed – uh, the experts and the court throughout this case clearly demonstrated that beyond that which I can tell you. Um, but, no, at 15 years old, I don't, do you remember what you're like at 15? You don't, your, your opinions are not yet formulated. I mean, if Alex is so hot to get my kid on the air, he should wait until he's an adult and can really make his own decisions. At this juncture, the child is in the middle of one of the most high-conflict custody situations that there is in Travis County. And I think he saw it on the air. I know that the day before or the day after Alex first aired him, he said that I didn't want him on the air. So there, that is um, a clear uh, manifestation of Alex telling my son 
that to define me, to ignore what I want. That is the opposite of co-parenting. It's the manifestation of the abuse that I showed at court, parental alienation. It's disrespect your mother, who cares. And, of course, if, what kid in this day and age wouldn't want to be insta-famous or all over, you know, the media? That's what kids are about now. But my son didn't get to have that be about his real interest, science or, or physical fitness. My son told me, you know. My son told me, you know, Alex is super wealthy. And he said, you know, Mom, I just want my first car to be a Prius. And I, when I want to go to school, I want to work and make my own way. I don't want to get anything handed to me. And what that told me then was like, man, I want to be my own person. I mean, kids of celebrities or notorious people or whatever you want to call them already have a horrible overlay of living in the shadow of that. This child now has been put forward as the imprint of his father. I mean, yeah. It, it's very unhealthy. I, I don't. I know a lot of celebrities with celebrity kids, uh, with kids rather, and I don't see any of those people doing that with their kids. It's it's horrifically irresponsible, and it, it's a terrible judgment as a father. And I think that many people listening to that already know that. So now, now, when you bring this up to the courts, what do they tell you? Well, I haven't yet had a chance to do that. Um, I, all my finances were depleted by the um, custody battle. I have an appeal on file. I kind of feel like some of this activity, you know, it's all very complicated in the legal realm, but it's sort of, a, you know, another distraction to force my one attorney to go deal with it. I mean, I'm actively, you know, seeking additional counsel and compiling facts, and I will take legal action, but, you know, legal things are very complicated. Um, even just to write a pleading takes some time. I don't have, like Alex has, I don't know how many teams of attorneys now. I don't have that, so I don't have the ability to jump forward right away. I have sent his attorney a letter. Um, his, my attorney has sent his attorney a letter. My ex-husband is clearly aware that I oppose this. His acting um, unilaterally is not allowed by court orders, so he's clearly violating orders, and it's, you know, there's clearly... Um, measures that need to be taken. I'm doing everything I can as a parent. Um, just one person, no assistant, you know, taking yeah. dinner for my other kids while this is going on. So. Yeah, it's, it's, a, <laughs> it's an uphill battle. And um, you're up against a cult and a major cult leader. So um, but it, the one thing, okay, listen, I, I, I'm more on your side and everything you're saying right now. I don't think he has the right to do anything with your minor child just as it is his minor child without both your permission. I, I'm not even taking sides. I'm not even going to talk about the history. Uh, two parents have to decide what happens with the child. And, and Kevin's assessment on Hogg is totally irrelevant to the conversation because that's, that's not what we're talking about. The, the, the other thing is, but the thing that still stays with me the most is, you were with this man for a long time. You were married to him and had three children. When was the first time you actually felt that um, he was, as you would say, like a cult, or he was like a David Koresh, or he was doing things that you didn't like? I mean, I think from the very beginning, you know, I've tried to explain to people, and um, I've really come out and, and laid it out pretty much straightforward. You know, I met Alex at a vulnerable time in my life. I had come back to Austin. Um, my best friend was dying. And Alex is a powerful, manipulative narcissist. And there's boards all over Facebook and Twitter about, you know, leaving a narcissist and dealing with a narcissist. I mean, I was targeted and grinned by a, an extreme narcissist at the beginning of our relationship, was very adoring and, and you know, almost bizarrely so of me. And, um, and I married him because I felt that I had to, and that's all I'm going to say about that. And I tried to leave him all the time, and it was a cycle of domestic violence. And I really tried to get out of that relationship. I did. I tried to – I filed earlier – and I just um, really, unfortunately, stayed in far too long. I mean, Alex did constantly threaten me that if I left, I'd never see the kids again, which has turned out to be, unfortunately, very prophetic, uh, or was for a long period of time. And, um, you know, just 
just really like heavy coercion and the regular tactics that are involved in domestic violence, you know. So that's that's the sad truth, and it's it's horrible. Also, like in my marriage, and you can just verify this by watching his show, which all his big fans, you know, think it's great. I guess that a father would be on the air as he boasted regularly, you know, 12, 18 hours a day that he worked all the time. That he was, and he was literally like many times just not around that much, and so. When he was around, it was terrible, but if you only saw him, I don't know, a couple nights a week and then maybe a few hours on the weekend, I mean, it made it less, I guess, urgent or, um, I, of course, should have had more of a wherewithal. I mean, I was also very isolated. He made me homeschool the kids. I had, and my kids were on swim team and they had a normal life. They didn't have a completely bizarre life, but it was not... Um, you know, what everybody else in America was doing and lived out in the country, you know, on a lot of acreage, not in a neighborhood. So it it was really a systematic um, separation, and I still see that going on in my kids' life now with, with what they're experiencing in many ways. So In, in their public life, they, they have to uh, attend or uh, deal with being who they are. I mean, they're not in a school where people don't know who they are, right? So... Yeah, they're, they're, people definitely know who they are, I would say. I mean, I think they're in a, hopefully in an environment where it's a little bit more sheltered than it might otherwise be, but yes. I mean, and, and now I'm sure my son, when he walks down the street, has people either hating him or loving him or egging him on or actually just saying those horrific things to him, which just breaks my heart. I mean, how does a, you know, a 15-year-old is forming their identity as an adolescence is like the hardest time, right? right? So how do you even process that? Why do you have to process that with the overlay of your parent? It's wrong. It's like, okay, imagine you're a car salesman, right? And all of a sudden you're like, well, my son is the car salesman of the year, and here he comes, and he's going to sell you this kind of car, and this is the only car he cares about. I mean, even that is questionable, right? Yeah. Because the kid didn't decide that he... I mean, how many movies are, are there about, like, I don't want to be a, a trade person like my father. I want to be an artist. I'm in love with you because I love you. You know, it's just a typical theme in humanity that people deserve the right to live out their future with autonomy, to, to, to realize their own dreams, not to follow through on the dreams of their parents or the hate or whatever it is, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I totally understand. Um where where do you see yourself going now? Like what's what's next? Like what's what's the next point for you? Where what are you after now? Well, um, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to bring back in some of the things we talked about earlier, but I am actually very actively involved in trying to expose the real criminal actions that happen in my case. Because I know that once those are once the Texas Attorney General or law enforcement has enough public um, outrage over what they allowed to continue to happen, not only in my case, but in others. So people that affected my case also affect others in my town. They take high payments. They refer to each other. It's just beyond corrupt. I mean, it's demonstrably corrupt. And so my, what I'm doing right now is I'm trying to raise public awareness about the criminal acts to get the Texas Attorney General to push for indictments to hold people accountable. I think the best thing that could happen for my family is for Alex to be held accountable because instead of helping him in a highly charged, high conflict divorce, these people empowered him to bully me and to gaslight me, and they didn't make him pursue any help at all, basically, like none. They had no concerns about Alex Jones. All the focus, the focus was on me. The best thing that can happen for this man is to have to sit down, take a long look at self, if possible, and say, whoa, I really am out of control. I really have gone way over, you know, mild, mild um, sometimes drinker into heavy alcoholic. Wow. I really have put my kids in jeopardy, and I really have, have horribly thrown them in the middle of a conflict that never needed to happen out of spite for my ex-wife. Because if he has to sit down and think about it, maybe, maybe he, his heart can have a change. Like, I'm not here, I'm not a hateful person, I'm not a vengeful person. I, I actually, the only thing I hate is that I'm having to do this, right? Yeah. But I am responsible for bringing forward what happened in my case. There are real monsters, grow monsters in Travis County. I'm working on exposing them. And I'm also working on, there's, there's tons of people that are affected with injustice and family court. And everybody thinks it's so boring or personal and it doesn't matter. 
but I think it's something like 41% of all first marriages in this country end in divorce. And so many people, there are hundreds of thousands of people out there who have experienced injustice, and there's a big community of them. And I believe that my case can draw awareness to this, you know, overreaching problem and hopefully affect real change. I'm developing a software um, for interpersonal communications between the parties and transparency with experts and attorney-client communications because I believe that there's a better way to do this to stop the conflict and to support people who are in a high conflict that they never asked for, to give them the tools to prove things up without having to go to tremendous expense and anguish, and to cut the conflict off at the knees by providing transparency between the experts. Hmm. So do you ever think that um, you and Alex will be able to resolve this peacefully? And I, and I don't mean that you're going to go to war, but do you think there could be some sort of, um, I don't know, resolve to this? Com com compromise, middle ground. Well, <laughs> so it is a war. It's a custody war, right? That's why I've launched custodywars.com. I am only the recipient of aggression. I am not the conflict conveyor. I have reached out to Alex to mediate so many times, to sit down at the table with me and to talk it out. I can't even tell you the countless times I've offered to do that. And he won't sit down and talk to me. I mean, it did come out in court, so therefore I can say it. Alex has a narcissistic personality disorder diagnosis. It's a tragic diagnosis. It's sad. I mean, something horrible must have happened to him to have him develop this personality uh, disorder, cover up, you know, that's what I'm saying about my kids, like, if you see somebody distressed, you don't know where they're coming from. I actually have empathy for Alex. I feel like he was just egged on, you know, just encouraged. But um, the narcissistic personality disorder diagnosis makes it impossible for you to have empathy or to be wrong, you know. And so, unfortunately, I don't – I keep – in fact, I often tell my friends and say, man, if I could just get him to sit down at the table and to show him, because Alex has said he's against corruption – but the people in my case, and, and he has acted with evident corruption, or I wouldn't be saying it on the air, right? Because I could end up losing everything I have left, right? Because he'll just see me into the ground. But I can't say it because it's true. And so this optimistic personality that I have, like, oh, if only you could just sit down with me and talk it out. I mean, everybody's just like, man, give it up. Stop reaching out, you know, because it's not going to work. And it's evident to me that it's not. Alex is brutal to me when he sees me. He laughs at me and mocks me in front of my kids. Um, he makes faces at me. I mean, it's just very, it's bizarre, abnormal, disturbing behavior, you know. And so, unfortunately, I'm not in control of that. And I just have to speak out to protect myself. I, I won a jury case. I spent every cent I had to get my kids out of a bad situation. I, I am primary parent by law, and yet I'm having to appeal unlawful orders that the judge issued. She's a biased, bad judge. She's, her name is Judge or Lyndon Aranjo. She's under investigation in three other cases by the Texas Judicial Commission, not just mine. So um, this is real unlawful corruption. It's like if you could think of the worst thing to have happen to a mother or a father is to lose their kids, right? And um, it's like being cast as a murderer or cast as something so terrible that you're so awful that you need to lose your kids, right? That's terrible. That's just as heart-wrenching, maybe, I don't know, I've never been accused of murder or whatever, but it's just unbelievably, untenably horrific to have that happen to you, the scrutiny, the shame that you're missing your kids and you're trying to get your kids back, right? It's a frame. It is an unlawful, illegal, criminal gaslight frame, and I will expose it. It's coming out. I'm going to expose it all over my website, and I'm going to do that alongside another, a bunch of great men and women mothers and fathers in this county who have been targeted by the same people. And there's going to be no gray area. These people are going to have to be indicted or people are going to be, it's going to be, uh, I don't know what, I don't know what will happen. I, it's, it's time for the Texas Attorney General to act and it's time for big media to cover the story. And because without that coverage and without great shows like yours picking up my story, in darkness and in secrecy, great corruption, true crime has been happening to children across Travis County. Wow. Uh, what, uh, you know, um, 
I wish we had more time. Listen, um, we'd love to have you this back. This is a whole again. other show. Yeah. Um, to talk more as you go further. Um, give out your information for the, for the listeners, for the uh, websites, and how you want them to reach you. Oh, that's very kind. Thank you for that. Um, so my website is kcitywars.com, um, and the main way that I'm really communicating information ongoing is on Twitter, which is where we met, Al. Yeah. Um, and my Twitter handle is alexjones underscore x, E-X. Well, fantastic. Um, I've really appreciated you being here and talking about things, and I, I, I know there's so much more to go. But, um, Again, let's set up another time. And uh, thank you for being here. Um, thank you for being patient. Yeah, and thank you all so much for the opportunity. It's a super complicated topic, and I appreciate you bearing with me. Um, I know it's also hard to stomach and believe that this could be happening, but you've been so gracious in letting me get my coordinates out. It's out there. I'm going to keep adding to it. And I just I sincerely appreciate you covering this. With all my heart, thank you very, very much. To find out more about our show, guests, or to listen to past shows from our archive, please go to www.houseofmysteryradio.com. Show's over for now. Was it as good for you as it was for me? Well, good night. This has been a production of Something Weird Media. I'll be back.